Hey, welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And oh don't man, it's Clive from Clive's Art and Art School in the UK, and as you can see, we're going to be painting this fantastic owl painting. Um, I've just taken the liberty of just pre sketching a, a couple of lines here and there and getting this owl looking nice and owly. And um, I thought, I'm just going to put a, um, a ground on this. I'll show you how to mix the ground. And then as I'm applying that ground, you can have a look at the palette. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my wet palette. This is uh, my standard wet palette I use in the studio. There's two different types um, on the website if you want to pop along and have a look at those. Um, and they're for sale, obviously. Okay, so I've got some medium mix. Um, this is um, a resin-based liquid that I use or a medium that I use for underbinding my paint and it comes in bottles like that so I just put a little bit in there there you go and all I'm going to do with that then is add about the equivalent amount of water to that and then that's all the moisture and all the water all the f fluid that I'm going to thin my paints down with um, don't worry about that little bowl there's not, nothing in there really to have any consequence and what I can do with the medium mix is added just a tiny bit of flow improver what i tend to do is just fill up that a center piece there with some flow improver and i just drop that in so a little bit at a time we don't need a lot of this my little molly's barking in the garden today i'm going to be using my fine mist atomizer during the painting but before further ado i've got a little bit of gesso in there i'm just going to add a touch of black and another little bit of color and as i do that um, you can see the colours coming up on the screen that we're going to be using today. Okay, so my line work. What I'm going to do is get my fine mist atomizer bottle. I'm just going to give it a little squirt like that. And sometimes these heads need cleaning, so just wash them through with some warm water and um, they, they unblock. Sometimes they do block a little bit. So look after those. I'm just going to moisten my brush, this is a half inch short flat. I've pre-mixed some um, gray gesso, it's just white gesso with a little bit of black. And I'm gonna go very lightly over the whole painting with this brush. And as you can see, it's gonna pick up some of that line work. That's charcoal, it's not a watercolor pencil. I use a charcoal pencil on it, so it is gonna pick up a little bit of color but we just want a bit of a gray background going on there so you can do this over your line work and it'll preserve your line work for you I want a, I want a gray tonal wash to this um, or ground as they say to this particular painting now I'm using a reference, um, a reference painting, as you can see, you should be able to see that one there. That's the reference I'm actually going by. Now when I pre-sketched this um, owl out, I've decided to put his head on more of a twist. He's not, that's face on. If you, if you can do a face on painting like that, even with a pet portrait, um, it's going to be a lot easier for you. Because when you've got something on a twist like this is, it's a little bit more, a little bit more harder for you to, to play around with and get those shapes. So if you're just starting out with pet portraits or wildlife paintings or something like that, then you need to find something that's face on with a tiger or an elephant or anything like that. If it's face on, it's a lot easier for you to play with and get used to painting these um, animals, these fantastic animals. And this is a bird actually, not an animal. <laughs> but I think for this purpose, it, it, there's, a, there's a couple of different ways we could approach this painting, um, there really is. So we can, we can approach this painting as, um, is it gonna be, is it gonna be photorealistic? Um, I don't like photorealistic, personally. I don't do photorealistic painting. I've done it and I'm not too fussy on it and it takes a long, long time. Um, there's, the other approach is then, is direct painting, which is what you can do. You can just go in with the color and build up all these different areas of color or you can do a grisaille painting where you can just paint it in gray and white and then do a glaze um, so I thought I don't know I don't quite know what I'm going to be doing as far as that is concerned at the moment but 
I thought today I'm not going to go in. I don't want to do anything too realistic. I want I want a representational type of look to this. You know, it's going to be an owl. You know, it's an owl. That's all I need to do. Um, if I was doing a pet portrait, then obviously you you need it as realistic as you possibly can, without making it look like a photograph. Now, if I was just going to do a, a, a painting. And don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking anybody that does photorealism at all. I'm not. I just personally, my choice is it's not for me. But um, if I was going to do a pet portrait and it was going to be so realistic, um, then I would just well take my camera and, and, and do it that way and get that, that made into a canvas print. Because it's, it seems a lot of work and people um, are less likely to, to buy your artwork like that anyway. Especially with the things you can get, fantastic things you can get done when you can take pictures on your iPhones and things and get them printed off. And I know they're not the same, but if that's all you want is a, a portrait of your dog, then trust me, I know there's a lot of people that would just do that. And they wouldn't pay for your time as an artist. And um, unless you're lucky enough to be um, renowned for that type of work, the majority of people, like myself and you, um, haven't got that type of name, so we've got to play clever. We have just added a bit of water. So we've got to play clever, haven't we? We have. So all I'm going to do is carry on with this, and I'm just going to block in this out. And then we're going to dry that off with a hairdryer. And that's just given us, because you can see he's very white. This is a barn owl, it's a European barn owl that I'm painting, I'm going to try to paint today. And I want it to look a little bit I'm not sure if I go for an adult or maybe even just a little chick or something. I'm not too sure. Chicks are really fluffy and white and I used to have barn owls. I used to breed barn owls. And I used to fly on them as well. I used to I don't know if you know, but if you followed at me uh, from the beginning, you know that I used to breed birds as well, so many years ago. And cockatiels and macaws and canaries and padrigars and all those type of things. And barn owls was one of them, yes. European barn owl. Lovely birds, they really are. Okay, so I'm just going to clean my brush. I'm going to dry that off with a hairdryer and I shall be back shortly. <laughs> Okay, that's that's nice and dry. Let me just make sure that's secure. Now, um, what I thought I'd do now is uh, let's let's have a look at the background. And obviously, they're in a barn, and they're in a roof of a barn. Um, this particular one, I I did put a branch in there actually, but um, I'm not too sure if I just put a maybe a, um, a piece of wood or something. Not too sure. Anyway, let's have a look at the background. I've got a selection of brushes, as you can see there, and and this is the one I just used. This is a half inch short flat. Again, I'm just going to moisten down my palette. Um, I thought I'd use a little bit of raw sienna, very, very lightly, thin down like that. Very, very subdued raw sienna. And I'm just going to put in a, just drag it across like that. Leave a little bit of canvas showing. You don't want it. There you go. And then leave a gap and then put another piece in like this. Bring that across there like that. That's going to represent some of these. Can you see those there? Yeah, that's going to represent some of like that. Now I got Boa, which is my cat, and she is bouncing across the roof of the studio. So you might need you know, some funny things like raindrops and that for. <laughs> but they've also got now Molly. Barking at Boo, I'm picking up some burnt umber. Barking at Boo, uh, because she's on the roof and she wants to get on the roof and she can't climb. <laughs> so that's why she's barking. So let's put a little bit of this colour in. I'm trying to make a definite, I'm going to try and make a definite line there so it looks as if it's a little bit of shadow. But bring that down then, like that. increase that colour, darken that in, and we're going to paint in the background on this particular one first. So I'm working on the background, 
there we go. So I want to try and develop some sort of a, a shadow there. It looks as if there's a beam then. These, I want these to look as if they're beams. But this is going to work really well with um, the colours that I got in mind. Well, you know the colours I got in mind, but you know the, the colours of the bird itself. It just it should work really well with that. The last time I I did an owl was quite a while ago, and um, I done that in pastel actually. Thinking about it. Sometimes you you can. Um, Cover up your canvas completely. You can cover your texture up completely. And uh, let me—is that look looking okay? I hope it is. And um, other times you want that texture of the canvas to actually show through. And this is what I'm trying to do today. I want this. I don't know if you can see, but I want that texture of canvas to actually show through. I'm just going to strengthen that side there. Now this is like the bottom part of the. That's the bottom part of the beam there, and that's the shadow part, and that's going to be lighter. So I'm going to put a bit of yellow ochre into my brush, and I want to just lighten that up. There, that. It's just an illusion. It's just an illusion. I'm going to try and make it look like a beam effect. There we are. And as you stand back, you should see it looks a little bit like a beam, I hope, anyway. We do try. Let's bring a bit of colour back down here. Very, very lightly, just scrub it in. I just want that canvas to show through. I don't want this to be a thick, impasto type of painting. Oh, I'm looking at this beam, it's a bit, it's a bit of a grey type of beam there. So I'm going to bring a little bit of black there. I'm going to bring a little bit of white to that black. I'm going to make a bit of a grey. Again, I'm, I'm not using a lot of paint. You can see I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm going to put a bit of grey in. There, like that, maybe. And it looks as if there's, there's eaves. The eaves actually go up like on triangles like this. So he could be actually sitting on one of those triangular parts of this barn. Because they're barn birds, they are, actually. They're in, they live in barns. That's what they call them, barman owls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, barn owls for a reason, Clive. <laughs> they call them barn owls for a reason. We certainly do that. So, okay, we can play around with that again. Now, I'm just going to wash that brush very, very quickly and just take the moisture off. I'm going to put that safe. I'm going to pick up a little filbert brush. Now, this is a, a number six filbert. There's my bin. There it is. And um, I'm going to go straight in to some white, picking up a fair bit of white there, like that. I'm bringing in a little bit of raw sienna to it, a bit more. There we are. Just want an off white. Just want a nice off white. A bit more. And then let me just have a look at a little bit more. Now you can do this in black and white, or you can use direct painting if you want to. I might do one in black and white one day. Actually, I've got an idea to do a pet portrait. Um, it's, it's a lesson that I've, I've used many, many times uh, as far as um, as far as uh, pet portraits are concerned, and um, it's one of the my favourite lessons to actually teach. Um, I'm teaching pet portraits. And it's a black and white painting, and it, it gets you used to it gets you used to. Um, let me think. Where's his head? It's, it's, he's got like it, he's got like a frill around his hair. Can you see that? He's got like a frill. So we've got to try and remember that that that's around that there. It goes in a little bit there. Look. See, and that blends in like that. So all I'm doing at the moment is just blocking in this colour. 
what we can do um, with the roof part and that later on is actually let me see which way is is is, is on it is that these these birds can twist their heads right around like that unbelievable they are unbelievable so we might look a bit weird when you, you've got owls in certain air in certain angles and you think well his head doesn't look right it doesn't fit his body but <laughs> it does that's what they look like so you've got to paint it that way so his wing is going to be coming in there like that so i'm going to bring in a bit more white and this time i'm going to be a burnt amber to it there we are i'm just going to warm that up a bit more and then i want to bring this can't go too dark with these colors if you if you look at this bird look at my reference photo there you can see that the color is not that strong they go very very white feathers and these are like you can see the yellow ochre and the raw sienna type of color speckled with gray and black dots so you you, you can't make this a, a, a strong um, painting at all so you've got to be mindful when you're painting things like this that try and keep within that boundary of color if you especially if you're following a photograph you know um, if you're painting just from your mind's eye then that's totally different then you can use your artistic license i'm not saying don't use your artistic license but what we're trying to do is get a representation of this lovely bird um, as quickly as you as possibly can yes so just dropping in couple of darker colors here and there let's just darken that up just a touch when you're doing it like this just add little bits at a time try it out try it out there you go don't paint feathers now, what I'm trying to do now is I'm, I'm establishing the feathers in place okay um, but I'm not painting I'm not painting like this I'm not painting a feather what I'm to trying to accomplish is the colors in between the feathers, the shadows. I'm trying to paint shadow rather than trying to paint a feather. It's easier to paint the shadow area like this. Try and paint because these feathers are going to be slightly smaller up the top here. So just try and get them into place now. Your eye will make up, your eye will make up detail, where there isn't any detail. It's just the way it is. You've heard me say this time and time again. So let's get a little bit of colour. and come from there out. Paint in a direction that you can see these feathers are going. Put a bit more white to that. A bit of a raw sienna. Make it a bit darker, make it a bit darker. Just bring a bit more raw sienna to it. Because we're going to be placing white on top of this. So what you've got to do is you've got to put your your underlining colour in place. And don't forget this is going to be subtle. This is going to be subtle. I urge, I really do urge you to take your time when you're doing something like this. Bit of burnt umber going into that side of it now. It's burnt umber. It's darkening into this area. I 
and let's just get a little bit of I'm not washing my brush I don't know if you've noticed but I haven't been I've been mixing these colors in my brush they're not going to go muddy I'm using the same type of colors now if I wanted to go like that I'd have to wash my brush but I'm just establishing what I need to establish at the moment and I'm just looking at some uh, mid-tones and some shadows especially on something like this beak we've got a beak coming in there like that and then bring in this colour out Riffling that edge, just get that riffle effect. Thank you. Keep building. If you make a mistake, or you think you've made a mistake, don't panic. Acrylics are very forgiving. Trust me, I've been painting with acrylics for a long, long time, and I've been painting. For even longer, <laughs> been painting a long time, Clive. I have my hands. My hands have developed a mind of their own. <laughs> they know what to do. I don't have to tell them anymore. They just go canvas, paint, brush, and they just go for it. <laughs> so I can sit here and talk to you, and I know my my, my actual um, look. My hands paint on its own. See, I don't even have to think. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's put a little bit of let's put a bit of color in there like that. Got a bit of a shadow going in there. We've got a bit of shadow. Now what I'm going to do is wash that brush now. He's looking quite nice. Actually, let me bring a little bit of that colour. Bit, bit, bit more white there. I'm just mixing these colours together. Just letting them work together. And let's just bring a little bit of... A bit more. What we're going to do before we look at anything else is I want to look at those eyes. Where's my bin? There it is. I'm going to have a cup of tea and I'm going to need a, I need a five minutes. I'm just going to let that dry actually. I'm going to have a cup of tea. I'm going to have two minutes, sit back. I normally go back to the back of the studio and I have a look and um, I'm going to decide exactly how I'm going to get these eyes looking right because that is the important thing. It's the eyes. The eyes are the center of the soul. When you're doing portraiture, or um, pet portraiture or anything like that you've got to make sure that triangle the eyes and the nose and the mouth you've got to make sure that that triangle is, 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 is as accurate as you can possibly get it the rest is easy trust me it really is I'm going to dry this off and I'm going to stand back and have a look Okay, so I've just come back and um, dried it off um, with the hairdryer and I've come back now. I've stood over the back end of the studio and had a look and yeah, it's looking owly. <laughs> Keep calm and I'm an artist. <laughs> Keep calm and I'm an artist, yes. Hey, look out for these, it won't be long. Yes, you might be able to buy a couple of these off me soon. <laughs> okay. Right, what I'm going to do, I got a number um, four round detail brush wait I got wheels on my oops I got wheels on my um, on my seat but they don't always roll bit of black now I'm looking at his eye and he's got a bit of um, looks a like gray looks like a bit of a gray um, ring around his eye so I'm just gonna lighten that black up and I go there's n not that much in it so I just I think that should be enough I'm going to just bring a little bit of my matte medium and don't forget now um, my matte, my medium mix sorry my medium mix and I put a bit of flowing powder in that 
So I'm going to get my clay stick. There we go. It's just a stick with a cork on it. Yeah, champagne cork. Well, it's it's a sparkling wine. I can't afford champagne. I wish I could. Okay, so let's just block out his eye. We won't worry about too much detail at, at this stage at the moment. I just want to... I got my reference photo to my right hand side which, which you've seen but I've also got another reference photo down by there on my left hand side and I've also got another reference photo stuck to my tripod. <laughs> so I've got three banner holes to try and work from to give myself a fair chance and don't just go buy one photograph if you can help it choose them and pick the best of all if you can there you go just looking at his eye there looking at his eye there and don't forget this is not going to be photorealistic but it's going to be enough of a an attempt within the time scale that I've given myself on this wonderful bird which is a British barn owl. I'm just going to put a little bit of there like that and What I did then, I washed my brush and just using the moisture off that brush just to give myself um, something just fell, I don't know what that was. There we are, I'll do it for now. And what we got is let's put a little bit of grey, let's just get a little bit of a a ruffling. Effect around there, like that. I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with that shortly. It's just a little bit of now. If I get this right, I should be able to put a line in there, like that. Concentration there, Clive. <coughs> there you go. You see. There you go. So um, I'm going to go back into this short flat. Uh, this is the half inch. And again, I'm going to pick up some white. I'm going to bit a bit of this bird number into that. I'm also going to run through a little bit of black. There you go. Too dark. Very very careful with these amounts. We don't want anything too dark. I told you this is very, very delicate type of painting. Not so much, not, not so much a painting itself, but more of the colours we're using. We've got to be very, very careful. And again, just putting in a bit of colour now. I'm looking at his. Feather pattern. Also washing my clock. Bring a bit of that colour in. Bring a bit of that grey across. Let's put a bit more white. A bit of burnt ember. There we go. A touch of black. Be very careful with the black. I overdid it before. Put a couple of those little lines in just on top of those other lines that we did. There we go. We're not painting feathers, we're just painting colour. Not painting feathers. Sounds like a song. We're not painting feathers. 
we're just painting color <laughs> I'm really I'm learning about habits off Jason I think anyway Jason yes there we go okay um, let's get this let's get a bit of that color looks like it's just about to see a bit of colour in there, maybe. Okay, what are we doing on this particular one? And yeah, we got a bit of a got a bit of wing going showing there on that one. I hope we can bring that. So his wing is going to be coming in. I need to concentrate on this. Get a bit of that raw sienna into that there. And then we want to bring this. Now he's looking a little bit more fluffy, Duffy. Isn't he? Is he certainly is. Let's go back into that detail brush now, and um, let's add a little bit more white to that grey. Let's just get a. bit of burnt umber. I'm going straight into burnt umber now. Just mixing burnt umber straight in. Picked up a bit of white with it but it doesn't really matter. I think when I go in I'm just putting a bit of colour in like that. I'm loose. I'm trying to be loose with it. I'm going to mix a little bit of black to that. There you go. Mix a little bit of black to it. Just darken up. Burnt umber and black. Look a bit of Van Dyke brown going on there. this brush out and just put in a couple of lines like this. Establishing just a little bit of shadow in a minute. Yeah. Well it looks a bit weird. <laughs> My paintings normally do. But uh, we'll get there. Put a bit of light on his. So grab your brush, have a great time. Beak. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk Okay, I'm going to dry that off. 
before I do anything else. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is going to work on the heart of the face, and then I can work around that. Um, and then that's the next thing to do. And I'm just going to concentrate on that triangle as I say. I'll try that off again. <coughs> so as I was looking at that, as I was drying it, um, I don't like this there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a little bit of that raw sienna in, and I'm just going to see if I can't get rid of that. That's not going to happen. So. I think what I'm going to do is get some titanium white and I'm just going to paint that out there. You're going to use a bit of gesso but I thought well I'll just get a use a bit of titanium white means I got a bit on my brush and I can re-establish that. So don't be afraid to change something, I've said that before. Don't be afraid to change something if you're not happy with it. And we need to sit back and look at this a minute. There you go. Sometimes, especially when, you, when you're doing something like this, like, like myself and there's a lot of other YouTube creators out there the same, this, we sit on angles and it's not always the best thing to do is sit on an angle to something because you, you, you can't get that shape right because you're sitting at an angle you know if you're sitting square on you, you would see it better so i'm just trying to move and see if i can move my myself about a bit and look at these drawings i got here and see if i can develop that more there So it looks a bit better and this is going to have to come more wing like I think it's going to have to develop more of a shape there Of this raw sienna I'm bringing in color there okay now what I was doing originally, it wasn't. I was going to work on this, on this bird. So let's have a look at. Let's go straight into some pure Mars black and pick up on this eye. We can get this bit right, then we should be cooking with gas. We should be we increase the darkness there. It's darken your darks. Yeah, let's just get a little bit of life into these eyes now, if we can. We could use a little bit of glazing medium for this if you want to make the eyes sparkle. And that's a good little tip. I've used that a few times. And, um, dogs and cats and things but for the moment this is working okay <clears throat> just going through a little bit of that grey I just want to increase the side of this beak a bit there taking the excess off and then just drag that up um, now what I want to do is get this um, shading brush this is a shader half inch shader 
moisten. I'm going to go into the little bit of this raw sienna and I'm going to go all over that area there like that. And a very very thin wash of colour. Just getting a bit of colour in. This is going to be a lot of white on this now, but what I'm trying to do is just establish some undertone there. <clears throat> bit of burned umber. So I'm going to put a, I'm putting a little bit of shadow in, and what I've done is I've just got a tiniest amount of burnt ember on my brush. I'm not using a shadow colour. I'm not using a black. I'm just using that little bit of burnt ember I got there. I'm going into a little bit of yellow ochre now. Again, I'm going to lighten off sections of this wing let's put a bit of a, a definite Now I'm actually thinking about feather shapes. Yeah. Just putting in some highlighting details on the wing area. Very, very light there. I want it to look as if it's just blending into that colour. And I'm going straight into some white. And I'm just dragging through. And that's not picking up exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to go back into a little bit of this raw sienna. I need to put a little bit more colour in there. I'm using my shader. I'm just dragging through. A yellow ochre. Right, we need to put this in place now before I forget. A bit of raw sienna. Bring a bit of raw sienna there and add, add in a little bit of Van Dyke brown to it. Just bring a bit of that up there. Mix them two colours together and Again, it's just not colouring like that. And I don't know how long this actually is going to take me, but when we put the highlights in this, it should work really well, I think. Mixing a bit of grey because I want to darken this edge. Put a bit of Van Dyke brown with it. There you go. 
bit of, bit of white to that now. It's changed the flavour, changed its value. Put a bit of a and then put it down. Just get some. Happy with that for the moment. Nice sharp edge. Makes it look like a beam. Nice sharp edge. There we are. Happy with that for the moment. Okay, let's using this grey I've got on my brush now. I'm just going to bring in a little bit of moisture in the brush. I'm just trying to develop some different types of shadow colours in there. We would do this with fur as well. Now this could be a young barn owl. I think this is going to be a young barn owl. It hasn't long, it hasn't long gone from that fluffy, fluffy stage as you can see. They really balls of fluff and then they get their, they get their faces, the hearts. They get the heart face and then they start developing feathers. So I think what I'm going to be doing is this, this one is just just coming into bloom. I think he's just developing that lovely, lovely colour that we see with barn owls. We got quite dark down there, can't we? Yeah. So I think wash that brush very quickly. Maybe there it is. And I know I'm gonna go into some white. Using the same brush, I just washed my brush. I'm just going into plain titanium white now. And now I'm looking at this face. And I'm just using the very very tip of the brush. And I'm trying to Find those very, very light, fluffy looking type of feathers. I'm going over that colour that we've put in place. Show you another tip in a minute. For the moment, let's just get some. I'm hardly touching at the moment. Let's just get some feathery looking type of feathers. <laughs> feathery looking type of feathers. They certainly are that. Either way, just develop that illusion that there's feathers there. We get a nice chisel in this brush to an edge. I'm just going to put in a bit of a riffle there. much paint on your brush when you do this. Pull it out. I'm trying to make those little very very fine hair like feathers with this brush. You can try another brush. You might be better off trying to distress a little brush I think. But I'm just using this shading brush for the moment because I'm not quite finished with So 
So that underlining colour we put in place is working for us now because it's showing that those lines that we were developing from this brush. Now I'm unfortunately I'm on a time scale, but you really do need, and I've said this so many times, you really do need to spend ages and ages and ages on this Just looking for feather shapes now. I'm sorry I'm not talking too much now, but this is just a constant build up now of those type of shapes. some definite marks like this now. They can look like feathers. Moistening my brush, taking the excess off and then going back into the paint. If you want, might be better that way. There you go. <clears throat> He's looking pretty good. It's not white enough in in around that area there, so I'm just going to carry on with this ruffle. Now, I think I'm going to have to, if I've got one, my rake brush, this is a rake brush, there you go, and um, you've seen me using this on grasses and things, and it's, it's a percentage of the hairs are a lot higher, longer I should say, not higher, I don't know if you can see, percentage of the hairs are a lot longer, there we are, see, so I've got some long ones, some short ones, and these are very good for grasses and things. And the way to use this is make sure that this paint is really thin and runny. So use a little bit of your flow improver if you wanted to. Or use a little bit of that medium mix. There you go. And try not to overload this brush. You've got to load this regular. And now we're going to be looking at these individual fur-like feathers. Just keep building, you've got to build this up 
don't forget watch look at your drawing look at which way these are gonna these are gonna go and they're coming in like that and what we can do then when this is dry is we can put some shadows and things in barn owls notoriously hard to paint because they're mainly white <laughs> so you, you've got to put your underlining colors in in order for your lighter colors to show through now you don't need to do a lot of a lot of work it's, just, it's like trying to paint a white dog so you, you don't need to put a lot of work into it you just want to concentrate on the underlining colors and then working on your your shadowing as well now we pick up these highlight bits and certain feathers that are going to be dominant on this bird we need to try and think of as well. said we were just going to do a representation didn't we so it's going to be a bit brighter there what I'm going to do is before I do anything else I'm just going to get my little detail brush again I'm just going to go into a little bit of white and now I'm just going to bring in the smallest amount of reflection just on there Let's just put a little there you go it's giving us a little bit more of a an owl looking type of bird and before I dry that again I'm just going to put a little bit of wash now there now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry this off and then I'm going to go in and do some shadowing I'm going to tighten up the background and then I'm going to do some shadowing on it. Yes, and I'll show you how to do that. And before you know it, we'll put some final detail in. And um, we'll have a wonderful looking owl. I think he's going to be a lovely little baby. Yes, he's having long arched actually, has he? You know, he's had his fluffy coat on. And now, now he's developing his adult feathers. So I reckon, I don't know, he's about six to seven weeks old maybe. Maybe a little bit older, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember the exact time when they actually started getting their feathers, but I think it's about eight weeks, I think. Okay, so I'm going to dry that off. <clears throat> okay, so I got my nice, I got a soft Aquafine brush. This is a watercolour brush and um, it's really soft and I like this type of brush for this effect. Now what I'm going to do, you've seen me doing this before, I'm going to make a wash. So a little bit of my medium mix and a little bit of flow improver in there. And now I'm going to go into some raw sienna and I'm just going to make a raw sienna wash like this. That should be enough. I'm just picking up a little bit of kitchen paper <laughs> and I'm going to go over the background with that. Being very careful not to damage the white of my owl. So I'm just going over that. And I'm going to bring a bit of that down on top of the top wing there. Bringing that around, strengthening up the background with this wash. And all this wash is doing is just darkening the darks, 
and just bring in a little bit of colour into a little bit of the canvas that I've left showing through just to give it that little bit of a, a nice effect. Don't go too hard at this, don't go too mad with it. There you go. So I want to make it look as if it's in some sort of a barn, but there you go. I'm putting that wash, wash, putting that wash, putting that brush back in the pot ready to wash. I'm picking up my um my half inch short flat again. I'm picking a burned umber now to that. A little bit of burned umber. A little bit more fluid. There we are, a little bit more burned umber. Trying to develop a shadowy wash now shadowy wash, a touch of black, very very small amount, there we are, so we've got a bit of a darker colour going on, and again, I'm just going to very very lightly, here and there, just put in a little bit of, of shadow wash, it's going to be a bit, little bit darker down here, a bit more moisture, Bringing this colour up, and glazing in to that white area, glazing down, and a bit under that eye, bring a bit of this colour in, let's make our colour a little bit stronger, and um, let's just put a little bit of a shadow there, which is going to come off his beak, we're going to make this area a little bit stronger around there, like that. A little bit of a shadow coming in there. A bit of colour there. Let's put a bit of colour around. You can play with this literally for hours and hours and hours and building up shadows and mid-tones and highlights and, and that. Let's darken that area there now. I haven't got time to do that. I'm just trying to show you a, a, a way to to develop this type of painting. Bit of colour in. You can see them starting to come together quite nicely. <clears throat> now, before I do anything else, I'm just going to get this brush, that grey we made, and just tapping it in like this splaying it a little bit because what I want to do now is just put a couple of fleck marks on the back of his wing there like this these are little tiny little black marks on his feathers this Just bringing this, bringing in a bit of detail now where we can. Bringing a little bit in. And again, black. Black, 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 pure black. Take excess off your brush. Take the excess off your brush. And let's put a couple of marks like this. Just to represent a couple of those little black marks. Very lightly, don't overdo this. It's very, very important you don't overdo this. Stand back and have a look. And how are we looking? He's looking owly. He certainly is. Now, we're going to go in to 
a detail brush yes this is a very very fine detail brush this actually is a number two you can use a slightly thinner brush than this if you wanted to but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and just bring in a bit more detail in just make a couple of these look stand out a bit more let's just put a few more ruffles a bit of thicker paint now a bit of thicker paint just around that it looks as if it's really thick and flumpsy flumpsy that's another word flumpsy <laughs> Oh, I snorted. Oh no, I snorted on camera. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, just put a coat of town and some detail now, like this. Um, I'll tell you what I could do. i tell you what I could do before I do anything else, really. Let's get a little bit of burnt umber. And let's put his. claw in there. Look as if he's holding on. and then just get a bit of colour and put a little bit of shadow on there like that make it look as if it's he's holding on to something because they, they can twist their they can twist their talons and they they're quite they're quite twisty birds these birds <laughs> they are really are they can get in some weird shapes and um, let's go back into our rake brush now I'm trying to make this paint just a little bit thicker this time and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in some definite lines like this just a little bit thicker paint there you go This way. Don't forget that ridge. He's got a. He's got a bit of a ridge. It's like going down there like that. We'll do that with a detail brush now. And he's coming out. Almost like, almost like fur. These feathers, they're so fine. They really are. You forget sometimes that you're painting feathers. We're going to put a little bit more shadowing into this before I finish. shadow in there before we finish and let's just go in with a couple of brighter flecks of feathers just to lighten up that one edge there a bit we could bring in a few more feathers here go 
go. And I'll tell you what we could do. I'll tell you what we could do. Get us some white. That's another detail brush. This is the uh, number six, I think. Number four. <laughs> number six, number four, number four, number six. Let's put a bit of pattern on top of these. Again, I'm going to go back into that very small detail brush, back into the black, and to get my pipe stick. And again, I'm going to do this eye like this. I'll show you what I normally do with a pet portrait. So put a little bit of glazing medium on this. Let's get a bit of that grey on the tip of my brush. Just lighten up the eyes just a touch. enjoyable and um, portraits animal portraits I love painting animal portraits and, and and I love doing things like this it's just nice it really is yes I think we need it there so I'm gonna get this shader again back into some white and again I'm gonna Put in some more feathers. And this. You've got to know really when to stop because you could be painting it forever and ever and ever and ever. But put a bit more. Shadowing in in a second. Again, I'm going to go back around this riffle. Like this a little bit thicker paint nice big Quite good actually. I'm quite I'm quite happy with that. Quite happy with that. Right, I'm gonna dry that and I think we're gonna do another shadow wash, I think. Right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get um, that short flat again that we put the last wash on with. I'm gonna get a little bit of burnt umber. I'm gonna darken it slightly with a touch of black. I want it a bit darker this side. I want this darker this side. There you go. I'll tell you why I've done that is because it's so bright. I need the light to, I need this side of the face to be a little bit more prominent. So if I could put this side in the dark, then that's gonna 
work really really well so I just get my brush and just put this over like that just down that, down that edge there that's what I want that looks a bit better because that's slightly lighter over there in fact let's bring a little bit of yellow ochre you might wonder why I've got red and, and yellow on my palette is because I scraped my palette off from another lesson and I've been keeping the paint so the yellow and the red are not really relevant so don't worry too much about that I'm just gonna put a bit of the lighter color in there so lighten this side dark that side that's gonna make this side a lot lighter and not a lot darker and it's, a, it's an old portrait truck trick it is, certainly is right gonna get my little um or shall we use a shader i think we use a shader where's my bin there it is i'm gonna use a shader i'm gonna put some more shadowing in around there we go put a bit of there be selective with this now You can marvelous way of building up a painting. Get some white. Again, looking at this. I need a lot of light really we need to brighten this area up a bit there you go and I think if we put a bit of a gray color again let's just bring this beak out touch of white Van Dyke Brown. No Van Dyke Brown, it's burned number, sorry. There you go. But what you could do, um I hope I got some. Yes, yeah, so I've got a bit of glazing medium and um, I use one of my medium pots. These these are little tiny pots, you can buy these on the website if you want them. Um I just this is what I put my mediums in so I don't waste them and I can pull them out of that and put them back in the bottle so I don't waste anything really that's what I call them my medium pots for and I'm just going to touch that with a brush and I'm going to go straight into this eye and I this is plain neat and glazing medium and I just want to put a bit of shine to his eye there you go just a little bit of a little bit of shininess it really really helps it really does and then get this bright spot there you go and what we could do in what we could do is take a little bit off there and just uh, just put a little tiny couple of marks like there's a little bit of moisture on the eyelid on the eyelid I'm not sure if they've got eyelids. There we are, but you know what I mean. And then you can go to town now and you can, if you want to increase individual bits of highlighting with a detail brush, then you can, you can go in with your brush like this. You can use um, any time of just round or square uh, round for this sorry detailing brush for this and um, I have been known to use a, a script liner before now 
if you want to get a nice thin line. So you could get a strip liner and you could make sure that's it's like making tree, it's tree branches really. That's what you want to do is get that nice and thin and then you could put in individual hairs if it's a, if it's a pet portrait or it could be um, in this case it's very 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 fine very very fine feathers so you can put them in individually now just to give it a little bit more shape and form you can see by doing this get a little bit more of a realistic effect so this is what I mean this is this is what happens when you go from accuracy it all depends how much accuracy you want I've ruined that all depends on much um, detail you want to put in something there you go it um, you could be there for hours days weeks really really could now you could put another color wash over this and then of a burnt umber or a raw sienna or something like that and then you could go back in with more fur and you could keep doing that and um, I say fur feathers and you could keep doing that and you could build this up really really realistically and I wish I had time to to do something like that but I haven't because I like to try and keep my these videos as realistically achievable as I can you can see you can put those in, those in and then you can get a lot of realistic looking feathery things going on there like that. So there's a little example of um, something that I do with my pet portraits. I've tried to use different techniques there and to bring you this lovely um, barn owl a british native bird um, barn owl um, bred a few of them in my time so um all that remains me to do today is thank you for joining me in the studio have a good day a good week a good month a good year because i don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this and god go with you and i will see you on the next one no worries. hey welcome thanks for stopping by it's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk